Robert Colescott said it best when he said he wanted to create work that makes you squirm. His work is not pretty. It is garish and gritty and screams of sex, violence, and death. His canvases are typically large and always give the illusion of brashness. Yet that is just it. It is nothing but an illusion. While Colescott paints powerfully ugly pictures, there is always a deep pleasure found in their calculated irreverence, a poetic and smart commentary on life as it both is and was. Colescott was a member of the greatest generation. He was born during the Great Depression in the Bay Area and came of age on the front lines fighting fascism. He then returned to California to receive his Bachelor of Arts degree in painting and geometric abstract style from UC Berkeley in 1949. Colescott then returned to France to study under French painter Fernand Laguerre. Laguerre emphasized scale, color, and most importantly, narration. Laguerre felt modern abstraction did not communicate ideas properly. Colescott spent the majority of his time in Paris looking at 19th century painting, which told him of both the human figure and the human condition two themes that are seen repeatedly throughout his work. After returning home from France, Colescott taught throughout the Pacific Northwest, as well as earned a master's degree from Berkeley. In 1964, Colescott took up a teaching residency in Cairo, Egypt, where the importance of narration was reiterated once again through ancient Egyptian art. When he returned to America in 1967, Colescott came home to what felt like a very different country. The civil rights movement had begun, and Colescott was forever changed. Upon returning to America, Colescott noted, When I had left, my experience had been that the only black people you would see in airports were people pushing a broom. Now they were demanding more, and that affected my painting. Today, Colescott, who passed away last June, is most well known for his appropriations of famous works, including George Washington Carver crossing the Delaware, page from an American history textbook, a take on Lutz's work, Washington Crossing the Delaware, and Eat Them Taters, his take on Van Gogh's The Potato Eaters. Colescott's substitution was meant to point at the absence of African Americans from American history. He once said, the greatest lesson in history is that we don't actually learn from it. However, as Colescott's work progressed, so too did the subject matter, and this particular piece, famous last words, the death of a poet, the composition is all his own. Instead of providing a snappy one-liner as it is argued his previous work had done, death of a poet provides an epic social and historical vision. A poet lies dying in his bed in the lower left-hand corner of the canvas. He is surrounded by almost dreamlike bubbles of past highs and lows of his life. He reflects. His vices as well as his values are shown side by side. The piece is offensive, yet also meaningful. Colescott, who represented the United States at the Venice Biennial in 1997, is an artist who has made a place for himself not in the margins, but in the center of mainstream history. His work presents a blend of high and low, black and white, and tragedy and comedy, presented with a radically democratic urgency, a drive to desegregate our collective imagination.